If I want to do any amount of non-trivial work in an application or service, I have to be able to prove that I am an individual user that is different from any other individual user so that I have access to my data and nobody else does. This is where identities get involved. Each organization, each service will be able to issue me an identity where I can log in with a username and password combination, a session token, or some other method of proving who I am. And that will separate me from the rest of the world. This is where identity attacks come into, uh, come into play. Identity attacks are when adversaries want to hijack a specific identity to gain access to any systems or resources that that identity may have access to. And usually identity attacks fall into a couple of different categories. Usually an identity attack will focus on exploiting some sort of authentication or authorization system. This would be uh, specifically focusing on how you prove you say who you say you are, or they're going to focus on getting credentials from the individual users at the time of authentication and try to let an adversary prove that they are the user instead. These are going to be attacks where an adversary uses malware or uses different kinds of tools to gain username and password combinations and be able to use those illicitly to log into services. A common technique that some adversaries use during identity attacks is phishing. Phishing is a really simple way for adversaries to trick other users into divulging information that might be sensitive. These would include usernames, passwords, or other sensitive information that they might have access to. Phishing can be really simple or it can be really complex. I have seen very simple text messages, very simple emails, simply asking for username and password combinations. And it can also get very complex to the extent that adversaries can create entire replicas of websites to make the attacks seem very genuine, to make the uh, areas that people input credentials seem to be real life websites, uh, either matching their own organization or a third party organization. They can even use trademarks, branding from specific brands that they view are trusted and you know things like that. When we talk about credential theft, that's not just one kind of attack, that's an entire category of attacks that might affect an identity. Credential theft is where an adversary wants to obtain username and password combinations or some other kind of authentication material, and they look for various ways to do so. This can include things like keylogger malware, which you know captures what you input on a banking website, for example. It can also include other kinds of malware that might try to steal passwords out of a web browser. There are several different kinds of credential theft attacks, and all of them are really equally dangerous because they can help an adversary figure out what your username, password, any sort of authentication mechanisms are, and be able to use those without your permission. Credential stuffing is a kind of identity attack where an adversary uses the username and password you have from one service to try to log in as you on other services. And this is sometimes successful because people reuse their credentials a lot. Uh, to give you an example, if I use service one and my username and password are T Lambert and password one, two, three, if service one gets breached and their username and password combinations are exposed to the public, an adversary can take my credentials and use them in a credential stuffing attack against service two, three, four, or whatever services they think I might use. This is a pure numbers game. This is something that's not guaranteed to be successful every time for an adversary. However, it is successful a lot of times because of password reuse. The easiest way to fight against credential stuffing is simply to not reuse passwords between services. If you're going to use different services, use a different password with each one and use a password manager if you can. An account takeover is when an adversary gains unauthorized access to a user's account to commit some sort of fraud or use it for illicit purposes. Uh, I hear from a lot of people that I can't possibly have anything of interest to an adversary. Why would they target my account? And the real answer is that everyone has something that's interesting to some adversary somewhere. If you have a bank account, some adversaries are going to be interested so they can try to commit financial fraud to be able to do either financial transactions as you or take the money. 
if you have an account for your organization where you can log into their Active Directory or other infrastructure, adversaries will be interested in that as well because they can use that to gain access to an enterprise and be able to move around that enterprise to deploy ransomware or do something similar to that. Even if you don't have any banking accounts, if you don't have an enterprise account, maybe you just have an email account. That's still something that adversaries will be interested in because they can turn that email account around and use it to create spam to try to compromise other systems. No matter who you are, you have an account that adversaries want to get hold of, and that's what happens when they have an account takeover. In most organizations, there are loads and loads of individual user accounts, but very few administrator accounts. And this is application of something we like to call the principle of least privilege. It's a really popular security concept. And in these situations, an adversary really wants to be an administrator so they can have sensitive access, but they're more likely to gain access to individual user accounts. There are simply more individual user accounts than there are admins, so an adversary is more likely to grab one of those individual accounts. When they do privilege escalation attacks, this is where an adversary will do some sort of either vulnerability exploitation or some other kind of credential theft attack or some other sort of technique to try and gain credentials for an administrator account and escalate from that individual user to a higher level of privilege. This is going to be what helps them achieve their objectives sooner to be able to move laterally around a network or to be able to gain access to sensitive data. Websites and services want to have a really good experience for users. So instead of requiring you to put in a username and password every time you visit a web page, usually what these services will do is they'll require you to authenticate once and then they'll give you something called a session token, which is a unique identifiable value specifically for you that is stored in your web browser, usually in the form of a cookie. Uh, this is a unique thing that is specifically for you. And the idea is that you're the only person in the world that can know this value. Therefore, you must be the person that uh, authenticated to this site. Adversaries know this, and that's one thing that they try to run after is these session tokens. So this enables them to do something called a session hijacking attack. The session hijacking attack is when an adversary gains hold of one of these session tokens and then uses it to authenticate as you to a web service for that token. This bypasses, skips the entire username and password combination altogether and lets them issue transactions, lets them commit fraud against whatever account you would have had to authenticate as, but you had the token stolen. An insider threat is when an authorized user uses their access for malicious purposes. And a good example of this would be if I was an authorized user for my business and I was really unhappy with how much I got paid for the business. I could open up the website and see that someone is really interested in gaining access to my business and is willing to pay loads of money for it. And in that case, I might think, well, they're paying a lot more than my business would pay. So maybe it wouldn't hurt if I installed TeamViewer or some sort of remote access software and let this adversary log in as me so they could do something under my account. That's precisely what insider access is. So in these kind of attacks, an adversary will be able to use that access to move around a network, be able to do things like deploy ransomware and be able to use that legitimate person as a leg up to do their malicious deeds. There are many different things where identity verification is part of a security model. These would include uh, financial transactions where banks have to know their customer and verify that they are a legitimate person before they do business. This is also a thing in employment verification. If you were applied for a job, you have to prove that you are who you say you are before you can go to work. This is where synthetic identity fraud comes into play. Synthetic identity fraud is where an adversary creates a fake identity based on a combination of real and fabricated information. The idea is that they want to potentially commit fraud and they want to bypass those security controls to potentially do money laundering, some sort of financial fraud, or they want to act as an insider threat and be hired in an organization. 
It's something that's absolutely in the realm of possibility and it happens all the time.